granola, bitches. Uh, Bilbo Bergens. My wifey has gone gr granola like a mofo. Since we got married and she's discovered all natural makeups and hair treatments, she has started washing her hair with baking soda and, and oils, leaving her hair stringy and ratty, but according to her, feeling good. Oh, Jesus. Also, she stopped shaving her legs, plucking her eyebrows. She doesn't brush her teeth at night and only showers every other day because she says it's all good for her skin. She's not a fatty and is a great person, but when it comes time to throw down in the bood boudoir, <laughs> she smells like a sweaty hobo and it makes me grit my teeth. Oh, yeah, dude. He says, I'm certainly not a Kong Dong, but she always gets worn out from sex and doesn't recover for days. This guy's fucking hilarious. A Kong Dong. All right. Needless to say, even after I tell her she smells crazy, she still does all of this. Oh, so you're telling her that she smells like a fucking a hobo. I love hobo. Hobo's so better, so much better than homeless guy. Hobo, it's like you smell like fucking the depression. You, know, you smell like the dust bowl. Um, I'm on the verge of freaking out and going strictly all hand or, le <laughs> or leaving it or leaving her over it. Um, not sure what to do and I'm sure you can't cure it, but any feedback would be great. Pine away and go fuck yourself. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, all right. This is what I would do. The next time she wants to have sex, I'd say, hang on a second. No, first, this is what I do. First thing I would do, I would go down to the hardware store and I would buy as many garden hoses as you needed to connect together from the side of the house. All right? Um, or maybe, no, that's going to cost you too much money to make your point. The next time she wants to, 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 to throw down, just somehow get her outside and say, yeah, hang on a second and just fucking turn the hose on her. <laughs> Dude, I don't I don't know what to tell you. I I don't I don't know. This is a deal breaker. You got to be like, "Lady, you fucking you smell like fucking 2000 BC. I might as well be fucking you in a cave with a with mully, with a woolly mammoth BVDs on. You smell like you should be holding a spear. How else do I put this? You know? You should be squatting down, banging a rock on some berries. That's that's what you fucking... You smell... Your pussy smells prehistoric. Even back in the day, I'm sure... You know, even if I smelled the way I smelled, chasing a saber-toothed tiger across the fucking plains, you know, if you smelled like this, I would drag you down to some prehistoric river and dunk you in there like five fucking times before I bent you over a rock. I'm trying to tell you, you fucking smell... Dude, this is like, that's like disgusting. And as bad as guys can smell, at least our shit can get a little breeze on it. You know? You know what a woman's smell, stinky pussy's like? It's like hockey stuff. It's zipped up in that fucking bag, and when she, un <laughs> if she unzips it, you can smell it from across the room. All right? A guy's fucking smelly junk, I mean, that's like, uh, that's like old fruit on the table. Flies buzzing around it and shit. It's still disgusting. But you know what I mean? It's not as fucking bad. Look, what's going to smell worse? A dead body laying on the side of the street or one locked in the trunk? All right? If I made my fucking point, hose it down. Hose it fucking down. Dude, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It's just, I, I, you know what I would do? I would just say, listen, I'm not having sex with you until you wash yourself properly. Okay? They make all kinds of all-natural soaps. There's no excuse for the way you smell right now. You are a fucking train wreck. Jesus Christ, why don't you just start shooting drugs while you're at it to add another level of skeeviness to this? Come here, let me show you something. Look at my dick. You see what it's doing? You see what it's doing right now? It's not interest. It's not finding the floors fascinating, okay? 
It's depressed right now. That's why it appears to be looking at the, the, the fine grain of our hardwood floors. Look at my dick. Look at it. That's what you do to me. All right? Dude, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. You've you got to tell her to fucking wash your goddamn ass. You know, I, I would just get like, I would get really passive aggressive. I would get one of those little spray bottles and I would have some perfume in there and not the all natural kind either. No, you know what? You got to be obnoxious. You got to get the old school one that has that little pumper on it and just anytime and, and don't spray it on her. Just anytime she walks by, just spray it. And when she looks at you, just be like, you, you smell horribly. And that smell is, is, it's getting on the love that I, I, that I have for you. And every day it's, it's like, it's like, you know what? My love, if you could draw it, looks like the roof on Bill Burr's house. <laughs> <laughs> Advice. Hey, Bill. I love your comedy. Really, really focus. I look forward to it every Monday. All right. It gets me. Jesus Christ. Wait a okay, I want to ask you some questions. Well, ask it. I'm 25 years old and have been married for two years to a great woman. No kids yet. Uh, we live very close to all of her family, parents, grandparents, cousins, all of them. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. That can be a fucking nightmare. All right? You better you better have the ground rules down. All right? And be like, listen, I know your family fucking lives right around the corner, but this is my fucking house. All right? It's my fucking house. They only come around on the holidays. They don't just show up like Kramer on Seinfeld. There's none to be, be none of that. So anyways, anyways, her grandmother is planning this big three-day-long family reunion this summer. And as much as I love my wife, I would rather take a shit on a hooker's toilet than go to this thing. Yeah, absolutely, dude. You're surrounded by them. I spend far too much time with her family as it is. And worst of all, I think it might, might conflict with when you come to do a show in my hometown. I told her today that if her reunion is the same weekend that you come to town, that I will just have to skip the reunion. Good man. Uh, she let me have it for about how important this is to her. This is what they do. This is what they do. Um, how her family comes first, and if I was a good person, I would go to the reunion, and then she started to cry. Oh, dude, she hit you with both barrels. Both barrels. Dude, uh, this is so fucked up. I'm actually going to whisper, and my lovely woman is fucking four states away. I had this fucking argument. I had this argument fucking a week ago. All right? Uh... Oh my God! You got to get to the post. You got to get to the mailbox first and look for those fucking wedding invitations. All right, and you get that and you just rip it up and fire it over the fucking fence. All right, I didn't do that. All right, I saw it. I knew it was an invitation. And she got this fucking invitation to go to a goddamn wedding. All right, in the middle of fucking nowhere. All right, and I said I'm not going. I'm not going. And then she starts telling me how important these people are to her. And I said, give me a fucking break. They're important to you? I've never heard you say their names. I don't even recognize these names. How can this be important? How can they? And then she, and then she starts saying, she just did the exact fucking same thing. Short of the crime. You know, I would think that you would want to go with this to me. This is important and blah, blah, blah. It's like, sweetheart, I spend my life in airports on airplanes. I don't want to go to an extra fucking thing. Okay? Tell them to put it on Skype and I'll sit there and watch it with you. I don't want to fucking go to it. Right? So, let me ask, do, do we ask them to go to any shit? Like, I would never drag my girl to a football game. She hates it. But I said, to her, this is really important to me. If you were a good person, you'd go and tailgate and get drunk with me. It's fucking ridiculous. I don't want to go. So anyways, then she started to cry. He said, I have got a lot of, <clears throat> a lot of this shit since I got married. Yeah, I could tell you that, dude, because you're 25. You know, you're 25. If you're 25 and you get fucking married, a woman is going to be 10 years beyond you just knowing how to fucking roll over you in a relationship but you, not all is not lost all is not lost let me finish this um if anything happens 
in her family, I have to be there, even if it's as small as her cousin graduating from the third grade. I'm sick of it. I mean, I really hate doing stuff like this. She knows I don't like it, but if I was just to flat out tell her I hate it, it would break her heart. All right, so you're a decent guy, okay? I would hate to do that because she's my wife and I love her. All right, is he a good guy? Thinking about her, okay? Oh, and I see my family, and I see my family about once a year since they live on the other side of the country. She just doesn't understand that I did not grow up in a family where we spend a ton of time together. So, shit, shit life family reunions uh, doesn't mean that much to me. I feel like those ladies should understand that if I miss one weekend with them to see my favorite comedian, who I might not get a chance to see again in a very long time, then that's all right. How do I let her know how I feel and get her to give me some space and not crush my balls about going to all of her family stuff? Um... All right, dude. This is what you do. Your heart, your heart, your heart's in the right place. You don't want to hurt her, okay? And I'm gonna kind of side with your wife on this one. In that, not really siding with her, but you picked the wrong one to put your foot down on. All right. What you had to do is put your foot down on. You know, little Mikey just made his first fucking popsicle stick house. We all have to go over and look at it. That's something that you can blow off. Like a major family reunion, you kind of got to go to that. You got to be by her side, okay, so that she can prove that, see, I got one. He loves me, right? So this is what you what you are right now. You're in a great position to barter, okay, because you're going to make the sacrifice of not seeing my show, okay? So this is what you tell her. Just say, listen, my favorite comedian is coming to town. Just like you said, I might not get another chance to see him. But because this is so important to you, I want to be there for you. So I will go. Okay? And she'll say, good. Thank you. And then you say, however. All right? And this is when you barter. And just say, all this... Now, I don't know how to say this eloquently. Because uh, I just have to get to the point. All this fucking bullshit, these cunty little stupid ass fucking things. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't want to go to them anymore. Okay? I work all day. I come home. I want to chill out. I don't know your family. I don't know. I married you. Okay? You want to go to the, you know, the Oscars of your family reunion? I will go to that shit. Okay? Your dad gets a new colostomy bag. I'm not showing up to that. I, I, I am not going to all of them. I will go to some. Major ones, I will go to. Christmas time, I'll put on the sweater. All right? But this fucking 24-7, all the fucking time, Susie Fuckface is having a birthday party. I'm not going to it. I'm staying home and I'm watching the game, okay? Because it's making me miserable. And I want to be happy with you, all right? And this is the thing. She might give you shit about that, but no. You got you to put your foot down and let her cry about it, all right? And just say, this isn't fair to me. This isn't fair to me that all of my free time involves being with your family. All right? I don't know how you say it, dude. You got to figure out how to say it. it's fucking boring. Good Lord, going over there. I don't like the smell of their house. I don't like their food. I don't like the color of their plates. I just want to get the fuck out of there. I'm not comfortable. You are. Go over there. They're prob they probably don't even like you going over there. You know, they want their girl over there. So fucking go over there. So that that's what I would do. Um, you just play her game. All right, my show is as important to you as that fucking thing. So why don't why don't you cry? No, nah, you can't do that. But you know what I'm saying? Just flip it around. Just be like, all right, well, I want you to know that I'm missing my favorite fucking comedian to go to this thing, okay? And I will go to this thing, okay? But from here on out, I am only going to the major ones, okay? Because I love you and I support you. But this ticky tack fucking horse shit, that's all you. I'm not I'm not doing that, okay? Because I need a life. Outside of this, outside of your family. All right? Go fuck yourself. Love you. Love you, Buttons. I'll see you later. There you go. How's that? Was that work? Um, stay with girl or not. All right. Hi, Bill. Love the podcast. Thank you. And in a tough situation, so I would like to know your thoughts. I've been with a girl for five months, and a few weeks into it, she mentioned she had been in a relationship for five years and is still friends with the guy. What the fuck? Is this the same one? I already answered this who I've met and who isn't a bad dude. She used to talk to him a lot, so she seemed not over him. 
and mentioned that they were basically fuck buddies since breaking up, which I don't mind happening, but do mind her thinking it's no biggie to tell me. <clears throat> All right, let me let me try and do the math on that. She mentioned they were basically fuck buddies since breaking up, which I don't mind happening, but do mind her thinking it's no biggie to tell me. So you don't mind if she's fucking this guy on the side? Just don't bring it up? Wasn't there an R&B song about that? Something about girl I don't want to know? Something? I can't fucking remember. Anyways, it seemed like it was a recent breakup, but when I asked her, she said in a roundabout way it was about two years ago. About two months in, she admitted that she had last slept with him the week after she met me, which was actually the night of the day we met up for the first time, so after our first date. This sounds dumb, but otherwise, things are good, and she's toned talking about him down since and is a good girl, different to a lot of ones in my past, which is why I stayed with her after that. This girl's fucking your brains out. That's what's going on. She likes sex, and I guarantee you she fucked this guy at least one more time after your first date. That this, that's my instinct. I'm not saying that's true. That's just my instinct. Anyways, she says, I'm 25 and haven't had a girlfriend before out of not wanting to settle and enjoy being single. Exactly. There we go. You haven't had a girlfriend before, so you don't know how to set up a relationship. Yeah, because you're setting this one up. Dude, come on. you got to have some self-worth here. Okay. Fuck this shit. This isn't the mother of your kids. She's got a fuck buddy. Bangs him one time after your first date. Obviously, she wasn't seeing fireworks. The fuck is she doing with you? All right, let her blow you one more time and show her the fucking door. Sorry, got emotional. I'll let, I'll, I'll, let's respect this and I'll read the rest. Uh, though I was getting sick of the single life when I got with her, and we'd be bummed out with the prospect of getting laid less than once a month. Yeah, you, you know something? You're both using each other. I, I, you're five months in. I really hope you're not in love with this girl. He said, I have graduated and want to move out of our city, partly to move in with a really good friend who I miss who lives interstate, and she still has one year to go and doesn't seem keen on moving. In your words, based on that one incident, I think I already told you. I don't think she's going to be the mother of my children. Here he is, and I'll always think... Of it when I tell people how we met. I feel I could be missing out on advancing my career and being with my best friend as I've grown apart from my other friends, as well as getting out of my shitty small town. Do you think I should move out and cut this thing short? Absolutely, fucking lootly and you know you should. Get out of your shitty small town. Fuck this, this girl. She's going to be in that same bar every fucking Christmas when you come home to visit your parents. Okay? She's going to be there. And every year her face is going to get a little fatter and she might have more ink on her fucking arm. And you are going to be moving on with your life. All right? And then one day you're not going to want to go back to that bar. You're just going to drive by it and you're going to be like, I wonder if she's in there. And you're not going to give a fuck because the girl of your, your, your dreams is going to be in your passenger seat. and You're going to drive right by on this perfectly fucking snow-covered road. There's a picture for you. But that's only going to happen if you dump this whore and get out of that small shitty town. All right. That was a good one, huh? Advice. Exotic pets. Uh, Bill, last week I was laid off from my office cubicle job of four years. I am now a 25-year-old unemployed college student struggling to make rent. Ah, Jesus. My heart goes out to you, brother. But at least you're 25. You're not fucking married. You don't have any kids. That's the bright side. And I know you don't need to hear that. All right? All right, here we go. Can't go back to my parents as they are halfway across the planet in Taiwan. Now my question is, do I continue to tr do I continue trying to get back in the rat race or do I follow my dream of becoming an exotic pet reptile breeder? Jesus Christ. How the fuck do I Are you just fucking with me? This is your dream? Well, you know what? You are from Taiwan. I imagine everything that's considered exotic over here is like nothing. You know, I bet over in Taiwan, instead of getting like a bicycle as a four-year-old, they give you like a defanged cobra or some shit. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just had to stop and laugh at the ignorance of that statement. 
Uh, <clears throat> anyways, I have no experience in the field. Fantastic. You're going to be on Spike TV's A Thousand Ways to Die. Except, okay, except that, that, okay, I have no experience in the field, except for that I have a snake and four hamsters as pets. All right, dude, I don't want to burst your bubble, but there's nothing exotic about hamsters, even if you have four or cuatro. Sorry, I started the new fucking Rosetta Stone Spanish again. Hmm? Yo tengo un pero es gris e blanco. Pero es bueno es loco. Hey, loco. How the fuck you say it? My dog's out of its mind. Um, la mujer. A manzana verde. Um, I've been... Let's get back to this shit. <laughs> I think I just said the woman and then green apple. There's really nothing that connected either one of those. Oh, go fuck yourself. I'm going to do it. At some point in my life, I'm going to become bilingual. So anyways, this dude wants to start raising exotic pets. Breeding them. He has no experience. Now, what kind of fucking snake do you have? You know, if you have a garden snake, gardener snake, I guess you got to start somewhere. You do have a reptile and uh, four little rat things. This is cool, dude. You know what you're doing? You're doing like the open mics of this. I get it. You got to start slow. You can't start right with the black mamba. You're going to get yourself killed. Anyways, he said, I've been to the Reptile Expo a couple of times and saw that vendors there just breed and sell snakes for a living and thought to myself, holy shit, I want to do that. Encourage animals to bang and sell the offspring. All from my own apartment, living the dream. What to do? Any advice? Uh, what gave you the balls to start stand-up? Um, understanding the opportunity cost of the income of a full-time job. Uh, any advice would help. Thanks, Mr. Burr. All right. All right. What do you do here? Well, dude, you're, you're doing the right thing. You basically, like you, you go into one of those uh, reptile expos and looking at the douchebags doing it and being like, I could fucking do that was like me when I used to watch some of those stand-up shows and be like, I'm funnier than this guy. All right. And you have the luxury of not having a job right now. So you don't have to worry about, you know, well, what if this interferes with my job? You don't have a fucking job. Um, your biggest thing right now, dude, is you need income. All right? So I would continue looking for a job that is flexible. All right? While you start building your stockpile of uh, reptiles. First thing I would do is I would go on the Internet and I would read as much as humanly possible. I would go to howtomaketwosnakesfuck.com. I would start... <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, dude. I would just keep going to those expos like they're open mics. I would keep reading up on it. I would try and find, uh, this is what you do. This is what you do. Act like you want to buy a fucking snake and go to some fucking dude and ask them how they got into the business as you pretend like, you know, like you're browsing. And maybe you can get a job working for one of those guys. You figure out what the fuck he's doing, right? You, you pull a Joe Kennedy that I've learned. Reading in the wonderful book, The Sins of the Father. Um, yeah, that guy used to work every place. He'd work at a place for like seven months to two years. He'd rifle through all the files, get all this insider information, make a boatload of cash, and leave the fucking company in the shitter. Okay? Now, I'm not saying to do that, but fucking work for these other guys. Figure out what they're doing. Do what they're doing. Become better at it. That's what I would do. If you really want to do this shit, I would. But uh, I got to tell you this, man. Um, I don't know how you make two pit vipers fuck each other. But uh, I would definitely get a, uh, I don't know, I'd get a thick pair of gloves. How do reptiles even get turned on? They just have that fucking look on their face like you don't know what they're thinking. You know? I'll tell you, if snakes had fucking hands, like, they would win World Series of Poker every year. There'd, there'd be no fucking way to tell what it had. Is it holding shit? Is it got a full house? I can't fucking just sit there sticking his tongue out of me. All right. Cheating. Hey, Bill. Um, word on the street is you're the male version of Oprah, so hear me out. You know what? That's actually insulting to Oprah, all right? Um, I've got this lady I'm fooling around with now and then. 
She has a boyfriend but doesn't seem to mind hooking up with me when I ask her to. Yeah, that chick's a fucking nightmare, dude. Uh, and before we even go, well, you're not going to have a relationship with her. If she cheats on someone, she'll end up cheating on you. And every time you fuck her, you're risking one of these times that boyfriend's going to find out and he might show up with a tire iron and, uh, you know, remodel your face. Anyways, when we met, she never wants to go further than second base, saying that would be cheating. Um, last night, I went to her house to pick her up for a party. Dude, there's not another woman out there that you could pick up for a party? What are you doing, dude? Do you want to be that guy? Do you want to be the guy who fucking plays with the tits of some fucking broad that has a boyfriend? Come on. Oh, there's nothing makes a guy weaker than uh, fucking easy pussy. Easy pussy has brought down more goddamn men. The layup piece of ass. Because um, we're lazy. Anyways, before we made it, and when I say we're lazy, I mean human beings in general. All right, ladies, before you fucking pat yourself on the back and make your tits shake. Um, <laughs> um, last night, I went to her house to pick her up for a party. Uh, before we made it in the in the car, I had her up against my car. We were making out like World, World War II ended. I then suggested, suggestively opened the door to the back seat. But instead of entering, she asked me if I loved her or if I just wanted sex. Yeah, dude, this girl's crazy. I neither confirmed nor denied either of those questions. Yeah, that's stupid. That's a great lie. That's great. All right. This is just straight across. the. This is a linear story. Begins with deceit, goes into deceit, and it's going to end with it. Um, I just went back to kissing her. After she got drunk at the party... Ah, oh, Jesus. Nah, and you're sitting there like a fucking wolf waiting for her to get hammered. Uh, we talked again, and she said she was willing to dump her boyfriend and have sex with me if I just told her that I love her and want to be with her. I actually don't, but I really want to bang this chick. I was thinking about just saying I love her and then dumping her after we banged, but I guess that would be kind of a dick move. Yeah, it would be. But I gotta, we gotta, everybody's got to take responsibility for their actions. This fucking woman is setting herself up for this shit. My, Morris comp, my moral compass has no needle, needle, Bill. Help me out. Greetings from Belgium. Uh, I hope you were able to read that fluently as you always do. Look at this guy. Fucking sarcastic in a second language. Um, yeah. Listen, uh, you know. Do you really want to be this guy? That's that's a, if you believe in karma, that's a really bad thing to do. All right, you're being lazy. Okay, this girl's obviously damaged. There's something wrong with her. And um, if you do what you're thinking of doing just so you can bang her, you're really going to devastate her. And is it worth devastating another human being just to get just to to fucking bang her? Here's one for you. This is classic. All right. This is uh, not my advice. This is standard advice, okay? Here's the deal. Why don't you rub one out to her and afterwards immediately think, do I really think about what you're doing and the way you're going to be getting this girl and ask yourself if you really want to do it, all right? And then act accordingly. And if you still want to do it, um, please don't ever get a job in a corporation because you will move up that ladder in 20 seconds. Oh, my God, he's a sociopath. He has no feelings. He doesn't care about people. Let's give him a corner office. Uh, girlfriend's parents. Hey, Bill, I am in eighth grade, and I am about to date this girl who is a freshman in high school. Dude, you're fucking crushing it, unless you're a woman. Then, hey, go easy. <laughs> yes, there is a double standard. Your mother would say the same thing. Uh, the only problem is that her parents don't want her to date me because they think she'll get bullied for dating a person in a lower grade from her. Oh, all right. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, I definitely don't want to leave the relationship for some bullshit reason, so I'm asking you and hopefully the lovely Nia, too, for your guy's advice on what I should do. Thanks and go fuck yourself. Wait, the only problem is her parents don't want her to date me. Well, I mean, you really don't have a choice here. I mean, you... 
your only choice is I want to keep dating you. It, it, this is the ball is in her court and is in, uh, in her court. So I would just say to her, say, listen, I really like you, and I want to uh, I want to be with you. I'd like to date you. Okay. Um, if you feel the same way, I'd hope you'd, you'd want to keep dating me. But uh, I can't make you date me. So, uh, you know, that's it. I'm going all in. World Series of Poker. I pushed all my chips in. You still want to be with me? I'll be down the fucking arcade tonight at 8 o'clock, whatever you kids do nowadays. I'll be staring like a zombie at my fucking PlayStation flat screen and the surround sound. Um, I don't know. What do you... Uh, I don't what, what 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 more can you do other than tell her that you want to be with her? You know, that's what I would do. But hey, no matter what, end on a good fucking note. If she can't do it, just just play this card at your fucking age. Just be like, you know what? I understand. He might even add this in there. Listen, I understand. I don't want to put you in a bad position with your parents, but I do really like you, and I would like to still be with you. And that isn't bullshit, right? But the parent part is setting you up for the future because next year you're going to be a freshman provided you study and don't fuck up and be held back. All right? Don't be that guy with the mustache in eighth grade, please. All right. Then you get to fucking high school. Now you're in high school. You know, it's not as bad. Sophomore, freshman, who gives it? Nobody's going to give a fuck. You're going to the same school. You're laying the groundwork to still be in the ball game. You know what I mean? You're at bat right now. The emergency swing right now. Stay alive. Stay alive. That's what I would say. Stay alive in the batter's box. Just say, listen, I know it's got to be tough that your parents are giving you a rough time, okay? And ultimately, the decision's going to be yours, but I still want to date you because I really like you, all right? But uh, I don't want to make you miserable either. So make, you know, God damn it, I went one sentence too far. I was going to say make a decision that you're comfortable with. Don't say that. Say what the fuck I just said and leave off that last thing. All right? And then that's it. And if she fucking lets you go, like I say, stay on good fucking terms uh, with her. Do not stalk her on Facebook. Do not pay attention if she starts dating somebody else. Listen, if she decides to walk, you just have to be like, all right, well, maybe next year when I'm in high school. All right? Maybe then? And she'll say, yeah, maybe then. And say, all right. And just say, listen, I'm not going to get mad if you start dating somebody else or something like that, and then you fucking get it out there, and then you can fucking crush it in eighth grade. You're in that, dude. You're already, you're already taking down them in ninth grade. This is like you're going from majors down to fucking college ball, you know? Hanging curveballs all day long, sending them into the fucking trees like the thrill ride. Remember that one of the first thrill ride fucking video I sent you? No? All right. Um, all right. Fuck list. Bill, I wake up at my girlfriend's house. She leaves for work. I can't find my socks. She says, I have some. She says, I have some. Just use mine and leaves. I wake up later and I look for the sock drawer, top drawer, right? Um, and I find this list with about 20 to 30 names on it. And my name is near the bottom. Oh, no. Some have check marks on them, etc. I ask her about it, and while she's initially upset, it turns out to be her fuck list. Wow. I don't even have a fuck. I have a list in my head. She actually made a fuck list? Dude, you coined a phrase. She said she made it after we got together with some friends drunk one night. She then admitted to being somewhat of a whore. Her words, not mine before we met, but assures me that she hasn't done anything since she met me with anyone else. I do believe her, but I totally blew up on her, and we haven't been talking for a few days. I also look a bit creepy as to why I went through her do drawer. It was in an envelope. Yeah, you know what it is? Yeah, you kind of look creepy, but she would have done that to you. You know, women call it snooping. When we do it, it's fucking creepy. Anyways, he goes, I need some help here on this one. Do I apologize? She already has. Do I just say fuck it and forget about it? What's Nia's take on it? God damn it. You know what? I'm going to have to ask her take on that one. 
I'm not going to have it on this podcast. When I when I go home, I fly home tomorrow. I'll try to uh, have an epilogue to this podcast, um, or maybe tack it on to, to the following weeks. That is a great question because I don't trust this girl. You know that when when a girl is that fucking free. All right, and I know girls are getting mad. Well, why can't we be as free as you? I'll tell you why you can't. Because you don't have to work at getting laid. Okay, I can be sexually liberated. I still have to go out to the bar. I got to do a fucking tap dance. You know, like me getting laid. It's it's like somebody on fucking uh, American Idol trying to get that ticket to Vegas. You know, that's what it's like. Is it for most guys, anyways? To get laid, even if you're good at it, it's it's like fucking you know, it's 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 not hot. But you guys, anytime you want to fuck, you can fuck. Look at that girl tonight. She came up with her back out. I didn't know it was there. I put my hand and I wasn't ready. Forty-four year old guy. I'm sitting there. But 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 I can't even fucking talk. Um. So that's what I would be worried about. She said she's a bit of a whore, like, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, or if, like, uh, I, I, I don't know about that one. She sat down and she made a list. Jesus Christ, 20 to 30 names. Now, this is the thing. I don't know how old she is. All right? 20, you know, for a girl, 20 to 30 names, I don't think is even that bad. The fact that she, well, I don't know, but it might be even worse because they they are not honest about their numbers. They do the exact opposite of what we do. Guys, we exaggerate our numbers. They dial them fucking back. Like, like women's how many guys have you been with numbers is like when they put out how many people are unemployed in this country. You know, they try to keep that number fucking down. It's the same thing. Uh, a fuck list. I mean, uh, I, I don't know how I'd ever get past that. You sat around with your friends. Are your friends all whores? You know? And it's not like they just sat there going, oh, yeah, you know, I fucking, you know, Bobby, Philip. Fucking Dakota. I don't even have a fucking modern name. Um, <laughs> Range Rover, whatever fucking people call kids, boys now. Um, and then, you know, there's checks next to them of, of like what she did with them or how good the dick was. And uh, I, I don't know if that's one of those things that they all fucking do. And you just unfortunately peek behind the curtain and you should let it go. I have no experience with something like that. Um, oh, this would have been a great Nia question. I have to do this with her and get into a fucking giant argument. But then I run the risk of possibly getting a, a fucking preview of her fuck list, which I don't want to know about. I don't want to know. I mean, I got to be honest with you. I don't give a fuck at my age. I don't give a, are you clean? Good. Okay. What do I think? You're a fucking... In a in a goddamn bubble. I hope you banged enough guys and learned how to fuck. I really do, because I don't need some fish in bed, you know, just laying there. <laughs> I haven't fucked a lot of people. Great. Isn't that great? Do you want a pilot who hasn't flown a lot of planes? You know? There, there's give and take. Okay, you got a girl who hasn't fucked a lot of guys, and, you know, she sucks a dick like she's eating green beans. <laughs> That's the trade-off, you know? Ah, dude, that sucks. That really sucks for you. Why were you going to wear one of her socks to work, though? You know, with, with a little fucking Chris Everett ball hanging off the back? All right, we got a fat fuck redemption. We got a redemption here. This is a nice shout-out to uh, Tosh.0. This guy's obviously a Tosh.0 fan. I'm not trying to steal anything from that show. Fat fuck redemption. Bill, I'm a 35-year-old guy, and I've been a big fat fuck for most of my life. Well, you know what, sir? The first step is admitting it. The fact that you can call yourself a big fat fuck, you know? It's like me when I go through my periods when I know I need to quit drinking. 
It's what I say to myself. Oh, Billy Fat again. Big fucking stupid fucking head full of booze. Big John Travolta fucking head loser. Stop your drinking. That's what I do. Or else I won't listen to myself. Has this podcast gone off the rails? I feel like I can't even think right now. Um, anyways, I developed an amazing set of breasts at the tender age of 13. All right, this is a guy. I just had to look at the name. Uh, that still puts both of my sister's racks to shame. 420 pounds was my heaviest. But I am also six foot seven, and built like <laughs> and built like the Irish Sasquatch, so I carry it pretty well. You see what I'm saying? This is why this guy's so funny. He had he grew tits at 13. He's six foot seven. He's 420 pounds. There's no way to not look like that and not be a funny motherfucker. Um, about 10 years ago, I dropped 150 pounds through a through diet and exercise. I had a whole new life, new career, beautiful women, the whole shebang. I had a, a good seven-year run. Yeah, dude, that's great, man. Seven years. You're a funny motherfucker. You're six foot seven. They probably feel like they're being held by a big bear. You make them feel safe. The next thing you know, they're fucking you. I totally see it. Totally see it. So anyways, he says, so here's my dilemma. About three years ago, I got off the track and put a lot of the weight back on, and haven't had a girlfriend the whole time, mostly by choice. Ah, you went into some self-loathing thing. I'm back in the groove now, dropping the weight and getting healthy again. I want to settle down and start something serious with the woman of my dreams, but I still have about 50, 60 pounds to work off. In a perfect world, it would be all about inner beauty and personality and shit, but let's be realistic. A smart, talented, good-looking, health-conscious woman is just not going to settle for a dude who is swinging around bigger tits than her. <laughs> you know what, dude? Personality goes a long way, but you're, you're 100% right when you're talking about the man tits. you got to get rid of them. He says, I suck at casual dating, and I tend to get sucked into long-term relationships very easily. Uh, so my question is, do I wait till I'm in the prime shape again before I start getting serious with anyone? Uh, I'm not trying to be perfect, but I'm not looking for perfection. But I just want to be smart about it. What do you think about the brick top? Um, all right. You have to learn how to – not only are you losing weight, but you got, you got to learn how to date, dude. All right. You've addressed that you're a fat fuck and you're dealing with that. You also got to address that you're uh, – you're codependent, and you're fucking lonely, all right? And it sucks. If you're codependent, you're a relationship guy. So it's very easy for you to get sucked into relationships. But, you know, you can't take the first thing that comes down the pike. Uh, so what you, you – you, this is the deal. You so know that you get sucked into a relationship. This is what I think, that you're like, all right, so if I'm going to get sucked into a relationship, I have to look the best that I can possibly look. So when I do get sucked into a relationship, I got a fucking, you know, top shelf girl that I'm doing it with. Um, I don't know. I don't think that that's going to work personally. I think you need to learn how to date. Just go out and start dating. And, and, and why don't you say that? I would say that on the date. So where's this going? Um, just be like, you know what? I'm in a period in my life when I'm trying to learn how to date. What is what does that mean? It means that I'm one of those. I'm a relationship guy, and I tend to get sucked into relationships. And uh, next thing you know, I'm in a relationship with someone I should have just had one or two dates with. So, you know, I'm not trying to be. Uh, I'm just being upfront. That's where I'm at right now. So uh, I have a list of questions. And judging by your answers, uh, will depend if there's going to be date number two. <laughs> you don't have to say that last part, but uh, definitely you got to you got to you got to come at it that way, man. Just come right out of the gate like that. You know something? You'll get some fucking ass even with your goddamn tits talking like that. You walk into a bar, right? You sit there. You already got a sense of humor. You make them fucking laugh. Some girl's eventually going to come walking up to you, some mess, or maybe some fucking borderline cutie. They're insecure too, you know? Maybe they don't like their fucking ass. Who knows what? 
right? They come walking up to you. So what's your deal? What are you doing just sitting there? You know, and you just start talking about There's nothing a fucking broad likes better than some fucking guy who's sitting there who's actually taking stock in himself, who seems like he's going to start taking life seriously, okay? Because they look at us and they see us for the morons that we are, led by our dicks, playing in mud puddles, breaking shit, acting like a bunch of fucking gorillas. So when they see somebody who's actually sitting there contemplating about where the fuck they're going in life and what they want, they're attracted to it. Not to mention you're six foot seven, they're going to feel safe, and then they got to be wondering, well, is this dick five foot seven? Right? So you just hit him with that line. What are you doing? I'm trying to figure life out. I have to learn how to date. And they'll be all over it. What do you mean? Dating's easy. You should have fun. Next thing you know, her fucking hands on your thigh. Right? A couple of limes in the Coronas, and next thing you know, whatever. All right. Hey, that, that's, what, that's what I hope happens for you. All right. Okay. Ex-porn star or something. Ex-porn is all it says. Dear Bill, I'm a 22-year-old lady seeking some valuable male insight and perspective. I've been dating my boyfriend for over a year now, and everything's been incredible. Well, congratulations. I've, I have no feeling that this is going to go in a different direction. <laughs> Anyways, <clears throat> we felt like soulmates and didn't like to be apart. However, all of a sudden, he became very distant towards me. I tried to ignore it, justifying it with some personal issue he was dealing with. Little did I know, those personal issues also involved me and his ex. Oh, jeez. Jeez. Feeling a horribly familiar sense, feeling a horribly familiar sense, infidelity deja vu. I think you skipped a word in there. I did something awful I could kick myself in the face for. I looked through his laptop. I know it's a really despi despicably dick thing to do, but I needed some strand of truth, even if it would break my heart. I got to tell you something. If he was being a good guy and you did that, you know, that's a piece of shit thing to do. And the fact that he was giving you the I'm cheating on you vibe and you still felt like a piece of shit by going through his emails, you're a good person. You're being too hard on yourself. Um, what are you supposed to be, you know? That person of good fellas who's content to be a jerk. What am I supposed to say, that my boyfriend cheats on me? See, I switched it up for you. Anyways, I read an email he wrote to his ex-girlfriend expressing his lament about being with the wrong person. Well, there you go. It's over. Game, set, and match. It went and went on about how amazing she was and how any other girl, me, would only ever be second best. This prompted me to look through his photos, and I found some recently opened but only nude pictures of her. This hit me really hard because unlike regular porn, nude pictures of exes hold something sentimental value I don't appreciate or think it's is appropriate. Well, that's about as lightly as you can put it. Um, yeah, you should definitely not appreciate that. He actually knows that woman and banged her. Uh, putting myself in this con conundrum, I couldn't bring this sensitive topic up without admitting I invaded his private... Invaded his privacy, although my hunch was right. I know I was wrong in looking through his personal shit, but is it wrong of him to still masturbate to naked pictures of his ex even after he reassured me he had deleted them? How would I go about talking to him about this? Or is this situation better left undiscussed now that we are on better or closer terms? I appreciate any piece of advice or opinion greatly. So uh, go fuck yourself, question mark. Uh, I, you know, I, don't, I, don't, what, I can't even fucking answer this. What? He gave you the vibe like he was fucking around on you, and he is. He is fucking around on you. And that whole thing about that you're, you're, you're second best? Go fuck yourself. Fuck that. Break up with the guy. All right? You know what your biggest problem is, sweetheart? is you are a sweetheart. And this guy is, at the very least, a confused... Uh, he's a fucking dirtbag. He's not being honest with you, okay? Now, this is the thing about 
if you're a sweetheart in life, male or female, uh, pieces of shit gravitate towards you. They need a sweetheart in their life to put up with their piece of shit behavior. So what you have to learn to do, that if you are a sweetheart, if you're a big-hearted person, you have to be guarded, all right? And you have to make somebody earn the fact that you're a sweetheart. You just don't give it away, all right? Because when you're just giving it away and you're fucking nice, hey, how are you? I just met you. Will you help me move? Okay, that's the nice thing. You're going to get taken advantage of. So this guy's taking advantage of you. Fuck this guy. Break up with him, okay? If he wasn't such a fucking shifty piece of shit, you wouldn't have to done that piece of shit thing. He basically gave you grounds for a warrant to go search through his shit, all right? And you were right, okay? Although you didn't get a warrant. You kind of did it like the robe cop who now has to throw his badge on the desk yet still go out and solve the fucking crime like all those 80 cop buddy movies. But you were right. You deserve better. Fuck this guy, all right? You should break up with him, even though it's going to hurt. Anyways, all right, female roommate. Howdy, Bill. Uh, you said howdy, so I'm reading all this in a southern accent. I could use some advice. Uh, I'm a 27-year-old guy living in an apartment and, uh, with a 19-year-old girl. Ooh, she just moved in a couple weeks ago, a couple months ago. Uh, we've been getting along great. But over the past few weeks, she's mentioned her sex life a couple of different times. Mentioned how she loves to give head. Yes! Could it be the most perfect roommate in the world? Um, you're the reason that God made a whore. All right, so she likes sucking dick. Okay, I see nothing but sunshine so far. Where, where, where's the rain coming? Here we go. And just the other day, she mentioned out of the blue that she posed for some nude pictures. Uh-oh. And she has no problem with nudity. All right. That's a major caution flag there. Anybody who takes nude photos or is in the uh, the porn industry, yeah, you got to watch out there. That's a ticking time bomb. Oh, Jesus. What happened? Was it your uncle? Was it the guy down the street? Who was it? Uh, she seems to basically say everything she thinks. Uh, oh, she basically said, seems to say everything that she thinks will get a rise out of me. Rise. You get it? That's what he said. He put that in parentheses. All right, here we go. At first, I didn't know how to approach the situation, so I just ignored her when she tried to steer the conversation towards sex. But she seemed to do this repeatedly. And I had enough with it, and I came on to her and told her that I wanted to see the pictures and then joked with her that it was for artistic reasons. Um, she seems shocked that I'd asked such a question. Oh, here she goes. Going to yank the rug out. And she joked with me and called me a creeper. She seemed to flaunt her sexuality in front of me and say how open she is with everything. But the second I made a move, she made me feel like a creep. There you go. You got one of those, sir. You got one of those. Oh, gee. Oh, gee. This is the, this is like, she's, uh, an Olympic level, uh, 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 what do you call it? Dick Tease. And I say Olympic level because she's actually dabbled in the porn industry with the nude photos. Um, I either want to bang this girl or get her to quit throwing her sexual suggestive topics at me and quit using me as an emotional tampon. Help me out, Bill. Go fuck yourself. I, I would say exactly what you just said, not the banging part. Just say, listen, um, just, you know, you know what you do? You just go, I would just go fucking don't curse. Don't say anything fucked up. Just straight out say it. Just say, listen, ever since you've been here, you have been just openly talking about sex. You talk about how you enjoy giving oral sex. You mention that you have nude photos. You don't have a problem with nudity. You're constantly bringing up sex. Okay? And the other day, you know, no, I can't go that way because then she'd be like, well, because you came off like a creep. Just tell her, look, don't don't bring up sex anymore. Can you Just don't don't bring up sex anymore. Uh, and just when she says, why well, just say, cause I'm not comfortable with you talking about it. All right. I would just like to have a roommate to roommate relationship. You know, I'm not trying to be a jerk. Here. Just please don't talk about sex anymore. And that would be perfect. Cause then you would totally like take away all of her powers. You just took the rope away from wonder woman right there. You know, and once you take a rope off, she can't find her jet. Isn't that how it worked? Come on, nerds. Any nerds listening to this? Actually, that's not true. She could see her invisible jet. All right. Sleazy douche. I Bill, this guy's from Scotland or he's a fucking pirate. 
Long time listener. Love your shit. Saw you both times in Sydney. Please help. All right. Maybe he's a Scott from Sydney. I don't know. Maybe he's like Bon Scott, right? Ah, <coughs> oh, fuck. All right. There's this fucking cunt. He grew up with my girlfriend. <laughs> this is why I love Australia. What a way to start a fucking thing. There's this fucking cunt. He grew up with my girlfriend as the lovable, sleazy guy that everyone tolerates. Oh, I got to hate that dude. That's just, that's just insert, that's just so-and-so, that's how he is, they say. So recently, he commented on a photo of my girlfriend leaning forward and unintentionally showing some cleavage on Facebook, and I can't stop thinking about wanting to slap him. All he wrote uh, was, Jesus but what kind of cocksucker thinks it's okay to comment on someone's ladies in a uh, someone else's lady in a public forum? Any idea on how I can satisfy my desire to write this situation without making it too uncomfortable for my girl? Uh, thanks and go fuck yourself. Um, all right. Well, first things first. I think your assessment of this person. Everybody knows this person. Uh, secondly, I don't know how you know how your girlfriend accidentally leans forward and unintentionally shows too much cleavage. This wasn't a video somebody else took that was shot live. This is a photo. I'm guessing she uploaded it, so she was all right with it. How do you accidentally... Oops, is that my ball bag? I Now I have to upload it, you know what I mean? Um... I don't understand why, uh, why this person is, uh in her life or in anybody's life. Um, there's a bunch of different ways you can go with this. You can go, uh, I don't know. What, what do you do? I mean, I, 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 I want you to say something to the guy, but I, I don't think it's going to work though. I mean, if this is a movie, you walk up and you slap him in the face, right? And then your, your girlfriend appreciates you and then uh, reciprocates uh, physically. But we know that's not how the world works, don't we? So, um, and we also know you can't you can't blame your girlfriend. So, uh, what do you do? Jesus Christ, this is a fucking quagmire. I thought this was going to be easy. This is goddamn quicksand here. So recently, you commented on the photo. Um, you know, he's a fucking jerk off. Why waste your fucking time? This is what you do. You know what? This is what you do. You just put that in the old memory bank, right? The next time you're out there playing Aussie rule footballs and he, he's on the other fucking team, right? And I say footballs, Aussie rule, Aussie rules, right? Maybe I was, that was actually me. That was a Freudian slip about fucking kicking him right in the balls. Uh, you take him out. That's what you do. Or you just wait. You, you, you pick your fucking. This might be one of those ones where you lay back, right? You pick your fucking spot. And, uh, you know, when the time is fucking right, you make your point. You look him right in the eye and you, you, you fucking you make your point. And who knows? If he pushes you, you get to slap him and you don't look like an asshole. All right? Was that all right? I don't know. For some reason, that guy really fucking annoyed me. I might have given you bad advice because I kind of got a... Uh, let my emotions get the best of me there. All right, let me read another couple of fucking uh, ads here and then we can wrap this thing up. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. I would bank that one. I would bank that one. Um, worst case scenario, I would ask your girlfriend, like, why is this jerk off in your social cir social circle? And just hear her out and be like, all right, why, why, what's wrong? Because uh, I, I think he's not a good person. I think he's a dirtbag. Like, why do you say that? Well, because he's commenting about your boobs. Oh, well, that was just... Oh. And just be like, all right. I mean, you just leave it at that. You said your thing to her, and then whatever. Ah, then that sucks. Then if you fucking slap him in a bar, you establish motive with her from the conversation that you know she's not going to forget. That's a tough one. You might have to go fucking psycho on this one. You might have to just... It's never good when you keep it to yourself. Ah, fuck it. Keep it to yourself. Just don't fucking do physical harm to him. But a nice bitch slap, a nicely timed bitch slap, that could be a good thing. 
Next time he says something, oh, dude, that would be hilarious. The next time he's out and everybody's sitting around all coupled up and he's just the fucking jerk off, right? And he makes some sort of rude comment. Slap him across the face. Not hard where you'd like actually do physical damage. Just slap him in the face like you would a kid. And then you point right in his face and just be like, hey, behave yourself. Like whatever a parent would say to like an eight-year-old. And just leave it at that. <laughs> and even if everybody thinks you're a psycho, at the end of the day, you still did it. And you know what? Even if he is a cunt, he's going to watch his fucking mouth around you. That's more fucking belittling than getting punched in the face. If someone just fucking just, you know, what if you just grabbed him? You know how your mother used to grab you on either side of your cheeks and she'd fucking, you know, she'd grab you with I can't, I don't know how to explain it. She just pinch in both of your cheeks and then your fucking fish puck it up. Your fish, your lips puck it up like fish lips. You just fucking grab it and she'd wag her finger right in your face. Just give him one of those. Something real parental and humiliating. Um, number two. So I'm a 20-year-old 20, 20 college student who works at a grocery store. So I haven't got laid in a few months and jerking off to online porn is getting more and more degrading and uninteresting. Uh, but recently, a chick... Dude, I can't even focus on these things. I keep thinking about the fucking game. But recently, a chick at work has been coming on to me. And we've been texting really sexual shit. Well, congratulations, sir. You'll never be able to run for president. Uh, and pr I'm pretty confident I could bang her, even though she has a boyfriend. Oh, Jesus. You know, I was just thinking about that. Is how you know they're saving all this shit. All this fucking lurid shit that we're looking at on the Internet. All our text messages... I'm predicting this. In 20 years, when I'm an old fuck and I'm in my 60s, and these young whippersnappers from this generation are, are, are they're running for president, that's what's going to be coming up. You know? Is it true that in 19... Fucking... No, that's too far back. Is it true in 2009 you texted to one of your fucking co-workers that you wanted to stick your tongue up her ass? Is this the kind of person we want running the country? It's going to be all that shit. Why did you jerk off to a uh, woman gets groped on subway in uh, February of 2008? Uh, I don't recall. Uh, uh, I let my roommate um, use my computer. I uh, watched it but did not touch myself. That will be the uh, I smoked it but didn't inhale line in 20 years. Was that choppy enough for you guys? Huh? Did you did you even hear the joke in my choppy fucking my team just lost the Super Bowl fucking delivery? Um. Anyways, so he says, but fuck, isn't it her responsibility not to cheat if she's putting it out there like that? And I think it's my duty as a man to fuck her. I don't even know what you're talking about, sir. I have no fucking idea. My team lost the Super Bowl. Let me go back here. Twenty year old college student working at a grocery store. I'm in late. I'm jerking off the porn. Chick's been coming on to me. She has a boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, fuck her. With any luck, she'll get caught, and that guy won't knock her up and marry her. Um, anyways, he says, and if her boyfriend finds out, hey, he can dump her and knowing that she's a cheating bitch. There you go. And I would be done with her forever, sort of. Okay, maybe not. But even though it's morally wrong to have sex with someone, uh, with a girl who has a boyfriend, we are 20 years old, and it's not like she's married or anything, and she's basically waving a steak in front of a hungry dog. What should I do? Uh, Fuck her in the cereal aisle. Do it. Who gives a shit? You're 20 years old. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Wear a condom. All right? Bend her over that little uh, caution floor has just been mopped sign. <laughs> Push her head right into the mop bucket and let her have it. Fuck it. Who gives a shit? My fucking team lost the Super Bowl. I don't give a fuck about her boyfriend's feelings. Um, number two. So I'm a 20-year-old 20 college student who works at a grocery store. So I haven't got laid in a few months, and jerking off to online porn is getting more and more degrading and uninteresting. Uh, but recently, a chick... Dude, I can't even focus on these things. I keep thinking about the fucking game. But recently, a chick at work has been coming on to me, and we've been texting really sexual shit. Well, congratulations, sir. You'll never be able to run for president. 
Uh, and pr I'm pretty confident I could bang her even though she has a boyfriend. Oh, Jesus. You know, I was just thinking about that. Is how you know they're saving all this shit. All this fucking lurid shit that we're looking at on the Internet. All our text messages. I'm predicting this. In 20 years, when I'm an old fuck and I'm in my 60s, and these young whippersnappers from this generation are, are, are they're running for president, that's what's going to be coming up. You know? Is it true that in 19 fucking – no, that's too far back. Is it true in 2009 you texted to one of your fucking coworkers that you wanted to stick your tongue up her ass? Is this the kind of person we want running the country? It's going to be all that shit. Why did you jerk off to a uh, woman gets groped on subway in uh, February of 2008? Uh, I don't recall. Uh uh, I let my roommate um, use my computer. I uh, watched it but did not touch myself. That'll be the uh, I smoked it but didn't inhale line in 20 years. Was that choppy enough for you guys? Huh? Did you did you even hear the joke in my choppy fucking – my team just lost the Super Bowl fucking delivery? Um, anyways, so he says, but fuck, isn't it her responsibility not to cheat if she's putting it out there like that? And I think it's my duty as a man to fuck her. I don't even know what you're talking about, sir. I have no fucking idea. My team lost the Super Bowl. Let me go back here. 20-year-old college student, working at a grocery store. I'm in late. I'm jerking off the porn. Chick's been coming on to me. She has a boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, fuck her. With any luck, she'll get caught, and that guy won't knock her up and marry her. Um, anyways, he says, and if her boyfriend finds out, hey, he can dump her and knowing that she's a cheating bitch, there you go, and I would be done with her forever, sort of, okay, maybe not, but even though it's morally wrong to have sex with someone, uh, with a girl who has a boyfriend, we are 20 years old, and it's not like she's married or anything, and she's basically waving a steak in front of a hungry dog, what should I do, uh, fuck her in the cereal aisle, do it, who gives a shit, you're 20 years old, what you're supposed to be doing. Wear a condom. All right? Bend her over that little uh, caution floor has just been mop sign. <laughs> Push her head right into the mop bucket and let her have it. Fuck it. Who gives a shit? My fucking team lost the Super Bowl. I don't give a fuck about her boyfriend's feelings. Um, all right. My friend is now a woman. Oh, Jesus. Um... To he whose hair is red and whose balls are blue. <laughs> I'm a 25-year-old man, and one of my close friends from high school, who I still see somewhat regularly, recently told me that he's, he is transgender. You know, I don't know what that means. Let me look that up. I always get trans. Transvestite means you just wear women's clothes. Let me get this right. Transgender. Here we go. Transgender, according to Wikipedia is the state of one's gender identity, self-identification as woman, man, neither or both, or gender expression not matching one's assigned sex. Oh, so you don't have to get a... Uh, so a transsexual, then, is if, if you had the, the sex change? You know what this is like? This is like trying to spell, like, psycho, psychology, psychosic, psycho psychotic. I don't fucking know. All those ph. P Y S C H, all those fucking things. I can never keep them straight. Um, identification by other by others as male, female, or intersex based on physical slash genetic sex. This is already over my head. Transgender is independent of sexual orientation. Sexual orientation. What is that? What is sexual orientation? What you're into? Now, i got to look on this, right? Sexual orientation is an enduring personal quality that inclines you, people to feel romantic or sexual attraction to persons of the opposite sex or gender, the same sex. All right, so basically gay, straight, bi, okay. So that mystery. Oh, my God, this is like quicksand. It just keeps going further. Transgender is independent of who you want to fuck. Let's put this in <laughs> layman's term. Transgender... People may identify as heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, pansexual, pansexual, polysexual, or asexual. I know what asexual is. I know what bisexual. 
What is pansexual? Why would you have sex with a pan? Uh, pansexual or omnisexuality is sexual attraction, sexual desire, romantic love, or emotional attraction toward people of any sex or gender identity. Oh, so that's not bisexual, like you're into men and women. This goes to the next level where you're also into transsexuals? Jesus, you know what? This this seems like, you know, when the, those word problems in math. Oh, my God. Look at this. You know, that this fucking, okay, polysexual. It looks, polysexual, you know, you, you know the male sign and the female sign? The sign for polysexual looks like that sign that Prince changed himself to. Polysexuality is the attraction to multiple genders and or sexes. What do they mean multiple genders? There's there's two genders. You're either a man or a woman, right? Or is a, a transsexual. I'm already lost. Is that considered a gender? A polysexual. If you run for office, do you have to know this shit so you don't fuck this up? President Burrow, how much does a dozen eggs cost? I don't fucking know. I got a private chef. A polysexual person is one encompassing or characterizing, characterized by many different kinds of sexuality. Polysexuality is a sexual identity used by people who recognize that the term bisexual, I can't even read this word, R-E-I-F-L-E-S, the gender dichotomy that underlines the distinction between heterosexuality and homosexual. Oh, is that what it is? I have no, I don't fucking know. I don't even know. All right, so, Jesus fucking Christ. You know what's funny? The amount of people that could read that and totally get it. I, I just, it just all becomes fucking mumbo jumbo to me. All right, I can't even remember. Transgender. This, okay, he actually said this means that even though he's a physically a man, he identifies as a woman. Okay. He told me that he isn't thinking about getting surgery or anything major like that, but wants to try living as a woman from now on. Well, he just became way more difficult to buy for, didn't he? <laughs> Guys are easy to buy. Now, what do you buy the guy who identifies as a woman that has everything? You know, what do you get him? Some Chanel scarf? That's out of print. I don't fucking know. Anyways, he has always been a little peculiar, so this didn't exactly come out of left field. But since telling me this, he slash she has begun wearing unflattering women's clothing that, to be blunt, looked fucking gross. Well, I bet did he know how to dress when he was a guy? I mean, can you give him a little bit of a learning curve? How would you put together an outfit? I would go with yoga pants and flats. I would just start, like, you know... I would dress like a woman on laundry day. I would ease myself into it, you know, before I tried to pull off anything a little more risque. You know, like, what would I change my name to? Would I be Wilma? Wilma's clubbing tonight. And then what do I do? You know, you know, I'd have to do some sort of theme, like dress like a housewife in the 1950s. Like Rosie the Riveter meets fucking uh, that chick who was banging Desi Arnaz. Um, Lucy. Whatever, I don't know. Imagine David Cross prancing around in a skimpy miniskirt. Anyways, I want to be supported. Oh, he went, he went, oh, he dove straight in. He's dressing like a fucking skank. Anyways, I want to be supportive of my friend in this time in their life and don't want to turn my back on them, but I don't know how much more I can handle seeing them dress like this and his slash her new interest in cutesy girly stuff seems contrived. I've, I don't think you can really contrive something like that. You know, it takes a lot of fucking balls, which I'm sure you can see hanging out of that small skirt. <laughs> to walk around in that shit. He says, I've thought about suggesting for him slash her to wear more conservative female clothing, but don't know how to begin to bring up a subject like that. Uh, I would just bring up Barbara Bush and just see where the conversation goes. Um, uh, I don't know what the fuck to tell you here. For making suggestions. Now, this is a question. Do you have to call her her? I think that's fucking weird. It's like you're clearly a dude. You still have a dick, right? You know, I I, I don't know. I guess. 
That's one of those things where you go like, yeah, he's uh, he's right over there. And then someone would be like, she, she's over there. People patting themselves in the back, how politically correct they are. Oh, you mean that hairy leg chick with the dick and balls? Is that where she is? Jesus fucking Christ, two plus two is five now? I'm accepting with, it with, the, with his jean skirt, isn't that enough? You're going to come at me about pronouns? Anyways, overall, this friendship is just proving to be exhausting because I feel like I've lost a friend I once had and they've become a new person that I don't get along with. Am I an asshole if I stop agreeing to hang out with him slash her and slowly cut them out of my life? What would you do in my situation? He slash she has always had a strong personality and many other friends, so it isn't like I'd be leaving them to be alone. But am I a bad person if I can't handle being their friend anymore? Thanks, love the podcast, and go fuck yourself. No, if somebody's being irritating, they're fucking irritating, all right? You've accepted their choice. You know, I don't know. If they're annoying the shit out of you, then yeah. You seem like you've accepted their fact. Like, you can't be, go so liberal that even though they've become a douche, that you're going to completely ignore that because you feel like you're now ex not accepting the fact that he now dresses like a she. So if you don't have a problem with that, which you don't seem to, but the person still is annoying, then, you know, don't you can't just fucking hang out with them because now they're wearing a dress. You know, treat them like a regular person. If they're fucking irritating, you got to cut them out of, their li out of your life. That's it. Valentine's Day advice, Billy Boy, dearest Billiam. I know this is last minute. I had a question about Valentine's Day. I am a single guy in my mid-20s. Rejoice. Dude, I'm going to tell you right now. If you're a single guy in your mid-20s and you live in America and you're living on your own, please drop to your knees and, and thank God whatever God you pray to every day because you're never going to be freer in your life. I know you probably got student loans and blah, 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 the stress and all that bullshit. Fuck that. Okay? You're never going to be freer in your life. Go get three years supplies of condoms. Okay? And bang away, my friend. Maybe you don't need to do it for three years. Maybe you're one of those guys for only three weeks, but you need to get it out of your system. All right. He says, I never really had a girlfriend... For whatever reason. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. We're going the whole other other way. Truth be told, my friends could name numerous reasons why I don't have a girlfriend, but that's an entirely different issue. Well, Jesus Christ, there's a fucking can of worms. They could. You don't seem defensive or argumentative, so I don't know if it's an anger issue. Ah, look, I'm, I'm so sick of trying to be fucking Hannibal Lecter here. Trying to guess what your shoes look like with the way, with the way you write, you know? All right, I'm just going to read the rest of this shit. Uh, as of right now, I am currently sleeping with three girls off. Oh, so you're fucking, you're, you're knocking it out. I thought you, like, never had a girlfriend. Like, and you, like, never banged anybody. All right, my fault. All right. Dude, go fuck yourself. You're a guy in your mid-20s and you're fucking three girls right now, and I'm, I'm this, you need advice? Uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing. Um, yeah, anyways, depending on what day of the week it is and how much I've drank. Okay, that depends on how many girls he's banging. Uh, I've never lied to any of, the, any, of, any of them about where our relationship is going. And although they never met each other, each of them has an idea that I'm seeing other girls. It's kind of a don't ask, don't tell policy. Uh, yeah, dude, and I, you got to come with that. You know, you can open with that. You know, what are you doing? I'm dating. I'm playing the field. How many people are you dating right now? Ah, a couple of people I'm kind of seeing. Just having a good time. Well, I don't do stuff like that. Well, there's the door, sweetheart. Then they'll respect like that, the honesty of that. Some won't. Some will actually have self-esteem and walked out. But a lot of them, they'll hang around. Eventually, they'll get tired. Their neck gets weak, and they'll fall right in your fucking dick. Um... <laughs> Birthdays and Christmas are always a piece of cake because all that requires is a quick text or a phone call or at the very most drinks at the bar. But Valentine's Day is tricky. Our dates consist of bar hopping and drunk sex, so flowers and a nice dinner would completely send the wrong message. Dude, you selfish cunt. Are you asking me how to keep banging these three chicks 
while getting through Valentine's Day? Why don't you just look at the Valentine's Day like that's your pussy getting all-star break? Just take three days off, the day before, the day after, and the day of. Just say, uh, hey, what are you doing for Valentine's Day? I'm, uh, I'm going to be, uh, Jesus, where are you going to be? I don't, even, I don't even have a good one for that one. All right, you know what? I just put myself in your shoes, and I understand your problem now. He said, I got into a little bit of trouble last year when one of the girls texted me and said, you know, every girl likes flowers on Valentine's Day. He said, I knew my response couldn't be, yeah, but if I get you flowers, then I have to get flowers for all the other girls. So I just pushed out and responded, yeah, well. Oh, dude, you shouldn't have responded at all. You know, every girl likes to get flowers on Valentine's Day. Isn't that funny? And that has nothing to do with most likely her having any sort of feelings towards you. It's just the bitch next to her in the other cubicle probably got some, you know. Or the girl in her fucking whatever the fuck you want to call it. Some guy broke my balls this week. It was fucking hilarious. He was trashing me. Say I come off as a pompous ass because I always talk about anybody who doesn't do comedy works in a cubicle. You know, and for some reason he decided to take that seriously and tell me that he actually works at the UN and travels all around the world. If that's actually true, sir, how, why don't you just get on with doing that? You work at the U.N. and you travel all over the world. Why would you give a fuck what some absolute jackass is saying on a fucking podcast? How insecure are you? Your insecurity is probably a great thing because that's probably the thing that drove you to be at the U.N. where you travel all around the world. You know what, sir? Good for you. That's awesome. I hope working at the U.N. and traveling all around the world fills you up some point where it fills you up high enough where you don't have to respond to a silly joke on some dumbass podcast. Um, I travel all around the world. Um, you know what? That's actually a great fucking job. Do you feel like you get anything done? You know, do you sit there wearing that headpiece next to that guy who's wearing the water buffalo hat? doing that shit, and you're sitting there trying to talk to him about how you can sell your rich crackers to their country? Is that what you're doing? When you're traveling all around the world? I travel all around the world! <laughs> I can just see you on the plane with your fucking dress socks on, you haberdash cunt. Oh, just sitting there. Ooh, what movies am I going to watch on this flight as I travel all around the world? Um, anyways, you know something, sir? You had you, you had the James Bond job, and then you fucking you played yourself. I don't know why you did that. Why would you fucking? That's like me responding to people on Twitter. Why would I do it? I should pretend like I have better things to do. Um, anyways, I want to keep seeing all these girls. Back to this guy. But, this, but at the same time, I don't want any broken hearts on Valentine's Day. Oh, dude, you know what? Go. F I, did, I don't understand. What is your problem here? Dude, are you like a Gemini? It's like you're this fucking lady killer. And then also you're kind of like, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody. Should I get her some jam jams? I, I can't even. I, I went, talk to the fucking UN guy. What the hell was going on here again? Valentine's Day, got a little trouble last year. Well, listen, you're anticipating trouble. Didn't you learn anything from last year? You know, every girl likes flowers on Valentine's Day. Um, what, what would I write back? I know what my response would be the second I read that. If it was just some girl I was banging and then they wrote that, I would get this awful feeling in my stomach. And I would... I would read it, and as I got that awful feeling, I'd go, yeesh. I'd make that noise. You know that thing, like when you're just banging a girl, and then all of a sudden she just fucking makes that comment? You know? You think she's on the same page as you when she just makes that comment? You know, I was thinking about you today. You just feel that feeling in your stomach? Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, uh, don't. <laughs> That's the fucking worst uh, you got to be one and done. But one and done is scary. You just got to be honest. I don't know. If some girls, what would I say? You know, every girl likes flowers on Valentine's Day. Um, what would I text back? Yeah, you know, that's what I heard. 
You know what? I don't, you know what? I shouldn't give you shit. I don't have a good response to that. Well, maybe someday you'll meet a guy who wants to give you some. You want to get drunk and fuck? Um, yeah, I got nothing. And you can't ignore it. You know what I would have done? I would have ignored the text and I would have called her. But a good three hours later, three, four hours, three hours later, that's a good one. You call her. You ignore that text and then you call her. And she goes, hello. And you're like, hey, what's going on? What are you doing tonight? I got no plans. Valentine's Day. What are you doing? And you just start it with that. And then she, well, what do you want to do? And she'll be seeing if you're going to take it in some romantic, you know, direction. And you don't. You just keep it in the fuck buddy. Well, I figure we go down to uh, Meat Hammers or whatever the, fuck, <laughs> whatever the fuck you call it. We go down to uh, take it in the face, have a couple pitchers of beer, and uh, see what happens. Dude, you know what? You're, you're, it seems to me you're not just fucking these girls. You're actually having like these mini relationships with them. You know, the, the key to having a fuck buddy is, is the time between fucking them. And I don't give a shit how much a woman says that she can handle it. Most of them can't. Most of them can't. If you're fucking coming over there, and you and it just eventually they're going to get feelings. They're more, I don't know if they're more mature or if it's a defect. It's just, I just respect the fact that that's how they're wired. So you if you have a fuck buddy, okay, let, let's just do the math. Okay, now, now February is a very short month here. So let's just say right out of the gate you fuck her on February 2nd. All right? You shouldn't come around again till at least the 17th. And but Grant, you fuck and you leave. F and L. You fuck them and then you leave. You don't bang her on the second. You bang her on the second and then you bang her on the seventh. You're in a fucking relationship in their world. You know? Unless you literally, the second you have an orgasm, as you're coming, you're scooping up your clothes and you walk out like half naked. Then you're just bizarre. Which is another good way to keep him at bay. And why don't I just read the rest of this and see what, it, what his question is here? He says, "I want to keep seeing all these girls, but at the same time, I don't want to break. I don't want any broken hearts on Valentine's Day. Yeah, you want to keep fucking all of them. No, dude. What you have to have, you have to have a revolving door. You have to have a stable of women if you're going to live this life, or you have to give in to fucking rubbing one out. All right." But you can't be a relationship guy with three different women because you are going to end up hurting them. So what you have to constantly be doing, you got to be like a college coach, all right? Every year you lose some top prospects, but you're out there recruiting, okay? So you, so you maintain, but it's never-ending. It's fucking exhausting. But if that's the game you want to play, that's what you have to do. So that girl who says, you know, every girl likes flowers on Valentine's Day, right there you put her on waivers. Okay, for a, for a fucking piece of ass to be named later, you got <laughs> you got to get rid of her. Okay, and you got to look, go back and analyze what the fuck you did wrong that she felt it was okay for her to text you because you fucked up. That right there shows that you fucked up. That she felt that she could send that to you if you think you just fuck buddies. All right. So, anyways, he continues. He says, I know that. Like it or not, this shit is important to women. If I take one girl out, I'm playing favorites and setting a bad precedent. Plus, if she does that check-in shit on Facebook, I'm completely fucked. Yeah, dude, you're doing dirtbag shit. If you're a single guy and something could happen that fucks you on Facebook, you're, you're leading these girls on. Anyways, he says, if I take none of them out or do nothing, I have three irritable ladies on my hand. Dude, are you going to marry any of them? No. Well, then let them go. Why don't you have the balls to do that? You know, when a team halfway through the season just realized, dude, we ain't winning this shit. Just pull a fucking Marlins. Just get rid of everybody. And then your fan base is your dick. And they're gonna be, he's going to be pissed for a while. <laughs> um, but then you build it back up again. Build it back up again. You know? I don't know. Look, dude, if you want to be in a fucking relationship, you know, 
there's other ways about going about it than doing this. But you're trying to have your cake and eat it. Um, dude, you, you, you got three women right now. You're banging three different women. Where's your confidence? You know what you're doing. All right? Dump two, keep one at bay, and then get two more. Then dump the other one and get the other one. Just You don't even dump them. You just phase them out. Phase them out. But the new recruits that you get in, you got to be straight up honest with them. You know, unless you actually feel feelings. If you're feeling no feelings, you know, don't keep coming back fucking them unless, you know, you get that 15 day. You fuck them on the 2nd, you fuck them on the 17th. Then you're into March and then bang her on like the 11th. All right? And even then, they can't catch feelings doing that. But before you know it, you know, that's like 14, 15 days out of the year taken up where you, where you got to bang somebody. This is such, this is, this is really should be eye opening to women that I'm actually saying. This is really, uh, this is really awful now that I'm speaking this out loud. Um, he says, in a perfect world, I'll take all of them out at once and have the foursome I've been chasing after my entire life, but we don't always get what we want. Any advice from the lovely Nia would be much appreciated as well. Love the podcast. Go fuck yourself. Uh, yeah, she probably wouldn't have been as uh, understanding as I was, even though I gave you a lot of shit. 